Hello and welcome to the Sheep and Cheerful podcast, episode number 13. And today's date is, I'm recording this on Wednesday the 8th of July, and of course this will be coming out to you, fingers crossed, tomorrow, Thursday 9th of July. Episode 13, that's pretty much three months. Look at that, they said it'd never last. <laughs> Anyhow, this is a podcast all about uh, crafting, about knitting, sewing, stitching, um, paper craft, all sorts, uh, crochet, shouldn't leave out crochet, weaving, spinning, all those things. Um, and my attempts to live as creative a life as possible in as cheerful a way as possible on a day to day basis. Um, my name is Nikki. I don't think I said that, did I? My apologies. My name is Nikki. I can be found on social media, on Instagram as Clara Pegarty. And we also have a Ravelry group called uh, Sheep and Cheerful Podcast, which is a great Ravelry group, which I'll be talking about a little bit later as well. So hop on over there and join in if you would like to take part in any of the things that we chat about today. It's Oh, it was raining this morning, actually, but it's quite windy, but it's not too bad. And I have moved back to my original position because I've moved the big loom into the kitchen. Um, I do find it quite convenient. The worktops are just the right size and we're blessed with quite a big kitchen. So the big loom is in there whilst I work on a blanket. So I have this this desk back. Um, and I just think the lighting is better. Having said that, I haven't done a test thing. I'm just hoping that it's better. Uh, yes, yeah, so my other desk, all full of clutter and everything, is over there. Right, so I've done that. I've done where you can find me, haven't I? Um, I spend, uh, if you haven't watched the podcast before, um, I am probably what would be considered a multi-crafter. I just love creativity basically. I love turning my hand to all sorts of things. Over the years I've done many many things and I'm still doing many many things which is why although I originally started this as a kind of a knitting podcast with a bit of crochet and fibre craft thrown in it is kind of expanding a bit so you will find segments on journaling, you'll find segments on paper crafting You'll find segments on cross stitch and um, English paper piecing, quilting. And um, there was another one. What was it? I was thinking first. Oh, the other thing you will find occasionally, I will talk about my faith because I am a committed Christian and I like to, part of my paper crafting is my newly discovered joy of Bible journaling, which I do quite a lot of actually. Um, and yeah, so my faith is a very important part of my life. So I think that's all the formalities done. Anybody who follows me on Instagram will know that I had a birthday yesterday. I will talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, but other than that, the week in review, it's been a fairly, well, it's been a good week really. It's not been a bad week, so we'll go with a good week. Busy, it's uh, Jonah, I think he'd possibly gone no Jonah left at the weekend he went up to Surrey to visit with his girlfriend for a week it's also her birthday this week so I said that uh, he should go and spend some time with her um, as you know if you remember uh, he gave me my birthday present early anyway in fact it was the very camera on which I am recording this um, very generous gift from my son god bless student grant so <laughs> A student loan, sorry, I shouldn't say student grants because he has to pay it back. Um, but that was wonderful and, and I said, look, it's absolutely fine. He was really split between, you know, whether to be here or there. Um, but yeah, I gave him a little bit of a push. So off he went up to see Emily. Hannah and Gary have been at home. Uh, Gary being my husband, in case anybody doesn't know that by now. Hannah being my um, youngest child oldest daughter, only daughter. <laughs> oh, no matter how hard I try. Why use five words when you can use 500? That's what I say. 
Um, anyway, yes, so Hannah and Gary have been around and actually today's a big day because Gary has actually um, gone into the office and it's a bit, we're a bit, again, those who don't know, Gary was recently diagnosed with a serious medical condition and um, he's on a, um, a tablet regime. Um, he's being treated and it's, it's all fine, uh, but it does make him... Um, what they would now consider vulnerable uh, because part of the drug medication is immunosuppressants but that's honey going backwards and forwards obviously still wants to get her say in the podcast she's found a little bit of tissue that she's now going to sit there and rip up I expect yes um yeah, but he's got in, it's a sort of a, an annual meeting he had to go into, so he's put his suit on for the first time in months, and of course his, his hair, it's long, it's really long. I told him he looks like, you know, George Michael in his wham days, it's all flicky and, except it's grey, but it's, it's uh, but he's gone off now, so actually Hannah and I have the house to ourselves, so I thought I would sit down and really get on with my podcast today. Now I have a little um, dog's head on my lap, but I'm going to ignore her in the hope that she will settle down. Um, what else? Yes, talking of haircuts or hair, I have an appointment with my hairdresser next week. And I don't know whether to share this with you. I am thinking of going much, much lighter with my hair. This is not my natural hair colour. I know. <laughs> Bless you. She just sneezed to left my leg. Um, you'll be shocked, I'm sure, totally shocked to know that this is not my natural hair colour. Um, it's a lot lighter than this and it is starting to get grey. And I was, up until about a year ago, I had light highlights and grey. So I had like a um, sort of ash grey colour. Um, anybody who's been following me on Instagram for a while would know because, you know, plus I used to dye the bottom bit sort of like a bright pink or something or subtle pink not a bright pink anyway I'm thinking the time has come to embrace um, light hair again because I love I love this color hair but there is a certain inevitability of um, you know losing my natural color and going gray and I'm just thinking about embracing it fully in one big hit so you won't know will you until next week you won't know, or I might put a picture on Instagram. I might just bottle out and go back to having it this. <laughs> anyway, you're thinking, what on earth are you talking about your hair for when this is a crafting um, podcast? Well, it's not. It's a creativity. And colouring your hair is creative, isn't it? That's what I say. I have got, honestly, I do so many things now. I learned a new phrase from Hannah this morning. I was sitting there surrounded by, because I got lots of lovely gifts for my crafting from my birthday yesterday and I was sitting in the kitchen surrounded by all these things and I just wanted to do everything. Right now I wanted to do my quilting, I wanted to do my patchwork, I wanted to do some art, I wanted to do some stamping, I wanted to do my knitting, you know, you get the picture. So Hannah said to me, Mum, you need to do a brain vomit. <laughs> I kid you not, she said, do a brain vomit on a bit of paper, just vomit everything out of your brain, write it all down, and then you can start picking through it. Now, back in my day, because we were a little bit more eloquent with our language, we used to call that a brain dump. <laughs> That's not much better, is it? Um, but I thought, okay, I'll do a brain vomit. Now, I'm not gonna go into details, I'll just show you though briefly. This was, in one of my bullet journals, this was my uh, there you go. There's my brain vomit. So we've got sections for fibre, Bible study, quilting, social media, dressmaking, weight watches, friends and family, fly lady, paper craft, headspace. So yeah, there's a lot there. But you know what? It worked. I did feel better. And it's funny because I homeschooled the kids. I don't know if you remember. I homeschooled them. And we did a lot of, I used to try and teach them how to mind map back in the day. So it's very similar because then what I did is I pulled out and I'm not going to, you know, I mean, these aren't, they're personal to me, but they're not personal, personal. Um, 
I looked at all the things that required any kind of habit or structure activity, things that I wanted to do either every day or every week. So I pulled those out. Then I pulled out a page of um, things that were external commitments, so things that involved other people that I had committed myself to. So I'm now beginning to break it down and it's, you know, it's starting to look a lot more manageable. I think the next step is to look at my weeks on a, on a, um, on a daily basis, but week to week and see what things I can fit in and around what. Hannah gave me, Hannah is very big on bullet journaling and she gave me um, a journal that she'd started to create for me for my birthday. And she'd set up the book reading section and she'd set up the Weight Watcher section, but she got a bit stuck because obviously doing it for someone else is a bit harder. So um, I'm going to take it back and take it over, but get her to help out with some of the artwork and things. So that's going to be really good fun. So yeah, my head is feeling a little less um, clogged up, shall we say, thanks to my brain vomit. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Let's move on to some knitted stuff. Some knitted stuff. I have an FO. I finished, Mum. I finished, Mum. One of my, oops, my projects I put on Instagram this morning, but I have finished. I entered these or I put these up in my, the, the ends aren't sewn in, um, in my I finished, Mum, in the I finished, Mum, thread I shall be putting them up in the actual FO thread I, I put them up in the chatter thread are oh, my cocoon socks there you go how's the light on that I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing no it's bring them over here there we go that's better that's better so these are the cocoon socks by Mina Phillip who is the knitting expat on Ravelry and on Instagram they are, as with all her patterns, here we go, the, the pattern is on just on the uh, instep, the front of the leg and the instep, and then, oops, I was pointing to me, around the back of the leg is just plain stockinette. Mina does that with virtually all of her patterns. I put in a Fish Lips Kiss heel, which is my favourite type of heel, as you know, um, and if I go really close, you can see little actually the other side is probably better you see that's it look so you can see they're like little cocoons um, it's so really very very pretty it took me a while to get my head around the pattern for this which is why I think it's taken so long it's um, I think it's a 12 row repeat I've got a feeling it's a 12 row repeat um, and I just, um, I needed to have the pattern in front of me until sort of about there. <laughs> These were toe up, by the way. And um, when I got to about there, I was able to just work the pattern. <laughs> it took me a while. I cast these on originally. So that's Henry plodding about there. I cast these on originally um, with a view to take them to New York when Hannah and I went to New York last December. And I was going to take them as a knitting project because this yarn is actually a Christmas colourway and I believe it's called Christmas Cheer and it's from Debbie down Sheepy Lane. It's I absolutely love this. Don't all rush over to her shop though because this is about two years old. But it was one of her vintage Christmas colourways and I just think it's beautiful. The teal and the pink together I just think are stunning. But yeah, so I didn't I didn't get any of this done in America. I ended up knitting on a gar on a stockinette sock. Um, but and they were sitting there and I thought no. So when I started the I finished my make along, this was one of my pairs of socks that I put in. They were both sort of up to about there. One I no, one I hadn't turned the heel on, one I'd just turned the heel on, and they are now finished. So bada boom, bada boom. Wonderful. Cocoon socks. Mean if still haven't got the knack of that. Oh, yeah. Mean Philip, knitting expat. Bunny sock blockers. Don't know where they came from. Uh, I think they might have been Prin. Ainsworth and Prin. I think. I bought them in a show a couple of years ago, but 
yeah so there you go finished object for moi now I've got my other pair of socks that I'm um, I put into our I finished mum make along but I will get to those in should I get to those in uh, just a moment because I did also want to share with you my project card that I made for the cocoon socks now I cast these on way back before I came up with the project card idea so I have done this retrospectively or retroactively so uh, for those of you who don't know about the project cards that's the details of the project it has a little clip of the yarn there and then the other side is free for you to decorate and in my newfound joy of paper crafting so I'll put cocoon my stamping isn't very clear there and I suddenly twigged you know cocoon butterflies so I did a couple of little flowers and some butterflies on my new die cutting machine which we'll get to later as well and I thought the colours of that you see matched really well so that is now going to take its place in my oh it's my camera gone wonky no I don't think so um I don't know where it's gone I brought my little here it's right in front of me so this is my this was the very first uh, project keeper that I made the last FO in here was the Moonwake Cowl, which was, if you remember, the Andrea Mary. I am now going to put in, now I have finished my cocoon socks. Well, I've almost finished, I do have to say the answer. And there we go. The newest entry in my uh, project keeper. Right. That was that, tick. Okay, I'm now going to talk about the Curious Handmade Mystery Make Along, which is the stillness shawl. So again, if you are following this and you don't want to see what Clue 2 looks like, you could see about two inches. No, you can't see. Oh, can you see a little nose there? Hang on, let me see if I can just adjust this. That. She's doing it again. Are you being a saboteur? A saboteuse, are you? Do you want to be on camera? See? Hello, everybody. Thank you. Right, go and lay down. Right, sorry about that. Again. Ah. Okay. Now she's going to go silly. And if she is, can you hear that? She's doing her crazy thing on the city. I will kick her out if she's too noisy. Um, what was I saying? Yes, if you don't want to see the clue, clue two of the Curious Handmade Mystery Knit Along, please look away now. I will put a spoiler thing across the screen, um, but look away, go away for a few minutes. I'm going to show where I've got to with mine, and then you can come back in a couple of minutes. I'll tell you when it's safe. Okay, so in my lovely bag from Deborah. So this is the, um, as I said, the Helen Stewart Curious Handmade Stillness Shawl Mystery Knit Along. And the clues come out on a Thursday, so it's quite good for the podcast. I aim to get the clue done, or I've aimed the last couple of weeks to get the clue done by the Thursday. So that um, A, I can show you where I've got to, and B, I'm ready for the next clue. Now, clue two did involve some lace. We are at a large number of stitches now on the needles. Um, so I have finished the lace and I've just got a few rows of stripes to do. So I'm going to hold it upside down because then you'll see what is actually being done. Are you ready? Look away. So there you go. That's what I've been working on. So it's that beautiful lace and it's in the pink. It's in this sort of baby pink. If I come closer, I don't think I need to really, do I? It's in the baby pink sparkly yarn, so it's got um, the silver sparkle in it. Um, that Jan dyed for me and gave it to me, Jan, who also gifted me the pattern. So if I then turn that the right way up, that's 
that's why you're looking at there you go uh there no you can't see me there you go so that is really starting to look very lovely i've got so i've got another i think i've got probably another block of those stripes to go and i'm gonna sit down let's say gary's out i'm gonna sit down after i film the podcast and put the stripes in look at that oh wow Obviously, it comes up that side as well, but I can't hold it up. Loving that. I'm so pleased with the way the colours are working as well. I followed Helen Stewart's guidance on the colours, so she suggested a light for the first one, a speckled for, no, a dark one. Well, she suggested a light, a dark, and maybe a speckled or variegated one. But the dark one, the dark one was to be used as colour too because that's where you get the um, texture and it shows up. Whereas if I'd have used the, the Lay Family Yarn one, which is this pink speckled, um, the texture would have been a bit lost. But that's just, and of course the lace is for the plain lighter colour. Really, really pleased with that. So pleased. So I am going to sit down a bit later probably be a couple of hours worth of work there because there's nearly 300 stitches on each row um, but I am thoroughly enjoying that so that is the Helen Stewart um, shawl that I'm working on okay you can come back now you over there you know you went over to the other side of the kitchen yeah you can come back in now that's fine yeah I've, I've finished talking no it's fine no I'll put it away you're not going to see it it's fine <laughs> can't help myself I cannot help myself okay my next project that I've been working on <sighs> the reason I hadn't got the stripes done on the shawl was because I did want to work on some other things this week rather than exclusively on the shawl because I do like to spread the creativity around a little bit so I started working on the cardigan which I cannot remember the name of for love nor money for some reason it's a weird name and I'm trying to think of it. What is it? You all know it. The Bismarck Cardigan by Anika Andrea Walker. I've got a very boring project card here. Uh, there, there you go. Bismarck Cardigan, Anika Andrea Walker. It's from a Rowan pattern book. Now, who is it? Who, who, who? Sue, I don't know Sue if you're watching this, but when I posted this on Instagram, you went straight out, bought the magazine, bought the yarn, and you started knitting it. I love that. Always happy to enable me. So, oh, oh hang on. My, my yarn is caught on my zip of my project bag. Ew, hang on. Just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. I'm going to do a bit of hoovering or something. There we go. Right. Sorry about that. So I'm knitting up the left front. No, the right front. And I'm doing all right. Look at that. I keep sliding around. So this, oh, just this adorable stitch marker, which I have shown you before, the little caravan. So this is where I was when I rediscovered this project and dusted it off again and I've now got that so I am very nearly up to the arm decrease and the um, the V of the V front it's got waist shaping so this side you can see you like that <laughs> so sorry so rubbish at this bit um, now I'm just I've just increased back out from the waist shaping and so that will be, she says, rolling over her dog with a chair uh, there. So that's kind of that cardigan bit. So I'm just up to under the boob there. So, oh no, his head's right by the wheels. Please someone remind me not to wheel backwards or forwards during the rest of this podcast. Oh no, he's moved, we're good. So yeah, really lovely feathering fan or old shell lace as it is also known which relates to the next project actually in this gorgeous um, buttercream yellow um, cotton 
blend from Rowan. It's I have Summer Light Four Ply. This is, and it's really, really pretty. I've got a no. I found an odd skein. Someone I was going to tell you the colourway, but I haven't got it here. I need to write that on my project card. But yeah, really enjoying that. And and of course because it is only because it's only coming up the front, it's um quite quick to do the rows and I have got the pattern memorised, a four row repeat for Feather and Fan and so it's quite quick. Um, I think once I get more of the shawl done, I will, once I put some good hours, some good time into that cardigan, I think it'd be quite a, a quick knit. I've done the back already so it's only another, obviously another side and then the sleeve so I think that that will be off the needles certainly in time to wear, sort of, oh, where are we now, end of July, it'll be, the shawl finishes end of July, I would have that done by the end of August, that would be my target I think, so, anyhow that was that, so just another whip, um, relating to, partly to the old shell lace and also to the I Finished Mum make along, the other project that I said I wanted to finish that has been dragging for some reason because I really like it but again it's just sat there unloved are the Soul Sisters socks by Jules Hill and Amy Loudon my lovely friends um, again this is one of the very first project cards I made so nothing super fancy schmancy but when I finish I will probably decorate that a bit more and these are the ones, if you remember, I had started to do two at a time and just decided I really wasn't enjoying it. I mean, it's perfectly fine to knit, but as I said before, with socks, I like to think of them as being able to do round quite quickly. So 64 stitches, um, which is what my standard sock width is, um, is absolutely fine. You do them two at a time, you're suddenly up to 128 stitches and it's not so much a pick down, pick down, put up, a pick up, put down project, is it? It's more, you have to commit to doing that. Um, anyway, that's how I feel about it. So, but I am, oh, look at that. I've actually transferred to DPNs. See, I'm mixing it up a bit. I'm a bit, of, so that one is still on the ridiculously long cable it was on for the two at a time and then I moved it I seem to remember a, a few weeks ago having a real near with um, Magic Loop I got really fed up with knitting Magic Loop so I obviously put this back onto to, uh, onto um, DPNs which are my Knit Pro Zing DPNs I think they are that is the beautiful um, Feather and Fan pattern down the middle of the sock this stitch marker I uh, where is it there I absolutely love that is from lovely Rachel up at I say up because she's in Scotland at So Ray Me I think she has those in her shop in her shop a lot of the time who wouldn't want a little rubber ducky on there so cute um, and these are toe up I couldn't remember so this one look that's my foot there's the heel and this is the leg so I'm actually again not far off there and the other one I've got to yeah I'm about halfway up the foot so the I finished mum cal runs to the end of August anyway so I've got plenty of time this yarn is beautiful I have shown it to you before and this is from Lottie Knits who's Charlotte da, 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 da. and do you know what I always forget her surname and it's ridiculous what is her surname? Charlotte. Anyway, she's Lottie Knits and this is her unicorn tweed colourway. Which is fabulous. I absolutely love tweed. I really do. I hope that's not blowing out too much. I think it looks alright in the in the viewfinder. So this will be if I'm gonna knit on a sock, I will pick up this over the next couple of weeks to try and get that done. I am still working on my, I've still got my uh, self-striping yarn from Debbie down Sheepy Lane. I've got that sock going on and I'm on the nine inch mini sex which I do enjoy but again not quite as quick or as, um, 
I kind of have to get into the rhythm of that. So rather I can't just pick it up and do a round and put it down. I kind of have to do a few before I warm up to the way I'm holding it and throwing the yarn. I'm a thrower, so it's, um yeah, for whatever that's worth. So that's my knitting. That's all the knitting projects I am going to uh, share with you this week. Next up, spinning news. Now, as I mentioned last week, I set up the uh, team Hey Wait For Me for the Tour de Fleece, just for a bit of fun. And there's a small handful of us in the Ravelry group spinning. I am particularly rubbish in that I haven't managed to spin for about four days, but I am really pleased with what I've done. Um, I've posted a picture in the Ravelry thread, so if you're interested in seeing, I'm not gonna turn the camera around now and film it, but I am filming, excuse me, I should probably cut that out, but hey ho, warts and all in this podcast. Um, I'm spinning the fibre from Hilltop Cloud, Katie at Hilltop Cloud, and it is the BFL Cross Welsh um, fibre, and I'm not finding it super easy to spin, I have to say. I don't know whether I said this last week or not, but I am having to be, if I was really loving it, I would be doing it every day, let's be honest. Um, and I'm not sure, it's a bit fluffy. Um, it's got a bounce, it's a bit like um, Polworth in as much it's got a bounce, but it seems a bit more unruly to me. I don't know whether the staple is shorter. I need to look that up actually. Note to self, look up the, the blend that Katie has um, put together. But it's good, we will, we will prevail. So if you're a spinner, and even if you're learning or if you want to just um, follow the thread, we have the um, team thread in the podcast group in Ravelry. <laughs> that was a mouthful to get out, wasn't it? And as I say, we've got, oh, there are four or five of us, I think, having a little spin. It's not too late to jump in. You can jump in any time between now and the end of the tour, um, which is another couple of weeks. In actual fact, I will most likely keep the thread open anyway for us spinners so we can just share share what we're doing. Um, again, it's I want the, the Ravelry group to be a bit like a knit night. So although you go with your knitting, you end up chatting about all your other projects, which is what I think is really nice. So that's the spinning. Okay, I am going to have a quick sip of water. Now you'll remember as well last week I showed you my Tilda quilt top. I called it a Tilda toy, it's not really, but it is probably 60% Tilda fabric and I had made my, I was making my half square triangles to put on my quilt and actually at the weekend I finally got myself organised, sat at the sewing machine, got the ironing board up and I stitched together the next round of half square triangles on my quilt so I'm going to hold it up for you. Yeah, Henry's moved now so we're okay. So, uh, there you go. I don't know if you can see the bottom of that. Hopefully you can. So it really is getting quite, uh, quite big now. So there you go. So that outer layer is the layer I've just put on with all these, these ones here. So this is a so this is just a, an ivory, generic sort of ivory, you can't actually see, it's got a slight imprint on it pattern. And then these, these um, floral ones are all Tilda fabrics that I, I bought a charm pack of Tilda squares. Um, if you don't know what Tilda is, sorry, you can't see me. Oh, now I'm going, <laughs> hello. If you can't, if you're not sure about Tilda, have a look at Tilda's World, the website. And if you like pastel pretty stuff, I should have done like that really, then um, you will love, love the website. So, 
I've got one more complete round to put on that and then it's just adding length so the width will be done I will be happy with the width this is this is actually not a specific pattern it's a design I saw some pictures on the interwebs that I really liked and so I've just modelled it on a handful of those so I'm just making it um, up as I go along really well that's not true I made it up at the beginning and wrote it down and now I'm kind of following that guide so that was my quilting what else then we've got excuse me a sec chewed cardboard that's what Henry just gave me and honey's now biting her nails next to me there you go Yep. Wow. Okay, uh, let's talk about the Ravelry group then, while we've got a moment, before I move on to a um, couple of other things that are more um, journaly related, that's what I was looking for. So, we have two um, make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group, in the podcast Ravelry group. We have the Scrappy Blanket Adventures which is for anyone who is making a scrappy blanket or a vaguely scrappy blanket and they you are less than 50% of the way through it or at least when you jump into the to the make along you are it's open you know it can be a brand new project quite frankly um it's open at the moment right through to the end of the year it's general chat sharing i mean most of us are doing you know at least one blanket quite a few of us are doing two or three there's people doing more than that even and it's just really good fun to see everybody else's projects growing as they do and it's really you know the group is really really starting to get chatty now and lovely we are running it I'm running it jointly with uh, Cherie who is the Ollie and Bella podcast although she's I believe she's having a, a little break from podcasts at the moment so I've said to her that that's well, obviously it's absolutely fine, but um, keep dipping into the Ravelry group. She's she's still running the Ravelry group with the make-alongs, and a lot of people are double dipping anyway between us. But even if you don't see Cherie this side of the camera for a while, um, we will be liaising and drawing prizes from the two podcast groups and what have you. We haven't decided when we're going to draw the first prize yet. It might just be suddenly I'll, I'll text her and I'll say, shall we do a prize? And we'll put everybody's names into a hat and um, metaphorically pull out a number and we'll send a prize. So jump in there. It can be crochet. It can be knit. Um, probably, I think I've said not quilting on this one, but weaving it could be if you're weaving a blanket. In fact, I'm weaving a blanket so I could end that. Um, so excuse me, honey, that's enough. Really quite disconcerting listening to honey bite her nails. Um, yes, I'm totally thrown now. Where was I? Yes, the, the scrappy blanket make along. So yeah, do enter. Do come and put some pictures in. Don't be shy. We would love to have you join in the fun over in the group. And if you're not sure, or if your blanket is kind of maybe 60% done, or you're not making a scrappy blanket, but you'd really love to join in, then I think I said this last week as well. Hmm. Um, do come and join in the chatter and just exclude yourself from the prize draw. It's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I did say that last week, didn't I? The other group chat, uh, the other uh, make-along that we've got going that is just in, in the Sheep and Cheerful podcast group is the I Finished Mum make-along, <laughs> which uh, is a, a make-along for those of you who've got those really ongoing old dusty projects on the needles you don't know why you haven't finished them you may have fallen out of love with them it may be that you know gold sparkly eyelash thread is perhaps no longer your cup of tea but if you really want to finish uh finish these things and you just need a bit of a kick start come and join in the i finished mum thread on uh make along that's right henry's gone so i can adjust my chair now um yeah come and join in the chatter thread there it's great we're getting some really old projects and it can be anything it can be 
uh, sewing project, cross stitch. We have a couple of the most amazing cross stitches, Lindsay, you know who I'm talking to, um, that are quite old. Um, in fact, I realised I've got a cross stitch project, not my um, women are architects of the 20th century. Um, it's, um, it's another one that I was doing before then, but yeah, that's going to stay dusty just for the moment. Um, and what was I said? Yeah, any quilting, sewing, uh, knitting, crocheting, any project that you have had that you know, and you know, don't you, that it's been sitting around for a little bit too long. Come and put, come and show us a picture of it in the chatter group. And then when you finish, you put a picture in the finished object thread. And then as, as usual, there will be prizes. Medals, perhaps I'll get medals. I think we all need medals. Perhaps we just need like you having a marathon. I finished it, so I get a medal. I might look into that. If anybody knows anyone who has a medal shop and wants to donate prizes, <laughs> because there are lots of medal shops around, aren't there? <laughs> um, but the good thing is, of course, we have the I finished mum bell. So, oh, both dogs are now pestering me. It must be around four o'clock because that's their dinner time. Never mind. So, who are we going to ring the bell for this week? And is the donger going to fall off this week? <laughs> Probably not. I'm going to be a little bit more gentle with it this week. So, we've already rung the bell for myself, for moi, because I had a finished object. Who have we got? We have, oh, I was going to check because I didn't want to give this person a double ring. Have I done a double ring? Where is she? Da -da 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 -da. No, Amanda. Amanda finished two cardies. Now, I've got a feeling they just needed the buttons sewn on, but they had been sitting in Amanda's cupboard for some time. She has sewn those buttons on. Well done, Amanda. You got the bell. Then we have Paula, who finished a really pretty pair of socks, pinky grey um, cream socks. Well done, Paula. Excellent job. Uh, Gillian. Oh, my goodness. If you get the chance, check out Gillian's Fish Tea Cozy. It's absolutely epic. And... No! No! But... This is not... That was not staged. Why would that happen? I was really gentle. This is, right. I may have to make this bell redundant. Uh, uh, I can't. There you go, I'm gonna. Because I can't be bothered to keep faffing around with that. So yes, Gillian's fish tea cozy and the polar bear, the little cute cuddly polar bear she made. So there. And finally, Mandy, Mad Mand, who made, have finished a little Olaf. It's so cute, Olaf. There you go. So you still get the bell, despite the fact the donger fell off again. So if you want, if you want the coveted bell, the coveted I finished mum bell, then Get knitting, get crocheting, get finishing, get your picture in the finished object thread. And you too could have the bell. This is a pretend bell, obviously. <laughs> Show you this sign I've got. <laughs> that should be up at the front of the podcast, shouldn't it? Honestly, it makes me laugh. Put that there. Reminds me. We're all human. Right. Next thing, ah oh, yes, there is also, sticking with the Ravelry group, there is a new podcast thread um, that I believe Amanda posted. I think it was Amanda. My apologies if it wasn't, but I'm sure it was. Pretty sure it was. Um, she said it would be nice to have a, a chat thread up for each podcast episode for comments and um, questions and things. You've obviously got the comments down below here on YouTube, but if you want to discuss something, obviously the Ravelry group is more um, conducive to discussion. So um, I will put up a thread for episode 13. And if anybody has any questions um, or really nice comments, because <laughs> I only want really nice comments, hop over there as well. Okay. 
So that was that. Look at that. I'm getting through my list. Uh, quick, I think um, I mentioned to you that I had moved the uh, the big loom, the blanket that I'm working on. I'd moved it out into the kitchen. So I haven't done an awful lot on that this week because, again, things have been a bit crazy. And with my um, birthday and things, it's all been a bit all over the show. But I will be spending some time on that this week. So next week I will probably give you a nice little tour of the progress I've made on that. Um, and then really I just wanted to chat to you about some journaling that I've been doing. So I'm going to have a little sip of water and then we'll move on to journaling. Okay, right. I'm going to just spend a few minutes sharing some of my Bible journaling with you mostly because I've done a lot of it. I'm not going to share everything I've done, but just something I'm working on that I'm really enjoying and it kind of relates to the the crafting that we all do. So um, I follow uh, Illustrated Faith on Instagram. I will put the details down below. I was blessed to be pointed to this by Cherie. And, oh my goodness, that was a rabbit hole she opened, I can tell you that. Um, so now I follow lots of incredible artists who do Bible journaling um, ephemera, basically. And one of the studies, or one of the um, oh, what, the camps they decided to do was this thing called The Big Story, which is an overview of the Bible and, and looking at the common thread, you see, that draws us through it. So I printed off the um, the big story. Um, I bought this, I downloaded it, and it cost, I think it's around about four or five pounds to download this booklet. So I'm not going to show you all the, um, all the ins and outs of it, but you get uh, 24 pages. Of, so that's an example. And so you can print them out and it's got different studies and different things on it. Um, and it's done really beautifully. And then I watched some of their ideas for how to add to your, to your kind of own personal um, story. And so here's the first page that I made because one of the things they talk about, um, who, uh, who wrote this? Let me tell you, I've not really prepared am I, Gillian? I'll try and put the, the link down below to her Instagram. They The way um, Illustrated Faith works, they have a team of artists and all those artists, although they submit the work to Illustrated Faith, they also have their own channels. So um, you get to know the different people and the different artists and it's really lovely actually. You could just easily spend your day watching Instagram stories of how they journal. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Of course I don't do that. Anyway, this was the first page because they talk about God's plan, God's plan weaving through our lives, weaving through time, and that you look at it as as you might a quilt, um, that you're putting all the different pieces together and how it fits together. So my first um, my first page was this. So I took um, scraps from oh, sorry scraps from my um, Tilda quilt. You can just. And I wove them and stuck them to the sheet. Then I used some of their artwork that came with it to make my first, my first part of my scrapbook here, my journal. And then the second side, I used, and I was really excited, I used some of the hexes that Katie sent me from America. So hopefully Katie, you're watching. Um, I'm going to be sewing with them, but I just thought it was really appropriate to use these to create the back of this or the other side of this particular piece of art. So I glued in the hexagons to show how things all fit together. I really, really enjoyed doing that. And then as a separate thing, um, this was another one about God's plan. And this one, I, I found myself doing the, being spurred to create this. Um, and then it seemed to fit. It's a passage from Romans about God's good plan for us all and about how all things work together for the good of those who love him. So I did that. And you can see here on this one, I made, I used um, one of the cutout ephemeras. 
and I added ephemera, ah, there you go, I added it to card like a dog clip and tied some ribbon on so that then sticks out the front. And I've just used the loose ring binders here. Now, as I said last week, a lot of people do this already. This is nothing new or groundbreaking, but I am loving it. I'm finding it such a great way, such a, a study enhancement, a way of worshipping and studying. Um, I am doing lots of other things, but I just thought I'd share that with you, give you a little insight. Um, Illustrated Faith do lots of these type of things. So you can make your own, you can put these into a traveller's journal. I've shown you my traveller's journal before that I use. Um, I got, for my birthday, I was lucky enough to get some more stamps, some Christian stamps and some other um, supplies, shall we say, which probably over the next few weeks you'll be catching a sight of because I'm, oh, looks like that went up my nose. It didn't, it's way in front of me, but sorry. <laughs> oh, can anybody take me seriously after that? Anyway, it's great. And I'm really, really loving um, my Bible studies. I have today actually ordered a study. I decided I wanted to dig deeper into one of the books of the Bible and I've chosen James, the book of James in the New Testament. So I'm going to be doing, when that arrives, I'm going to be maybe picking out a month or a four weekly Bible study where I dip into James and really focus on that. So yeah, if anybody else is out there doing that, then um, we'll have to share some chat. I am, and I'm gonna take a deep breath when I say this, I am going to open up a new thread in the podcast group, actually, in the Ravelry group, that I'm probably going to call it something really original like prayer and share, um, because I feel that from what people have told me, and I know I felt the same way, that we don't often feel comfortable sharing our faith on a platform like Instagram. If we're kind of on there because we're a knitter or a crafter, we don't always then feel you know, comfortable or confident enough to come out and talk about our faith. And so I thought it would be really nice to have a little safe space um, in our Ravelry group where we can chat about um, faith related things really. Um, it would certainly be a place where if you had a situation that you were comfortable sharing but you would really like some prayer, you would like people to pray for you, then you could put that in there. And it's down to you, it's entirely down to you whether you feel comfortable sharing things or not. I will be strictly moderating the group, that, that particular thread. So at the first sign of anybody there who's there for the wrong reasons, then um, I, will be, I will be moderating that. Um, so if you would like to go on there and share, or if you've done a Bible study that's really good, if you've got a favorite preacher or some Instagram people you follow, or if you want to share a testimony of what God's done in your life, then that would be the place to do it. So we'll see how it goes. I honestly don't know. I felt I felt directed to do this. I would love for you all to see it as a as a space where you can come and share your faith and ask questions. Um, if there's people who don't understand Christianity, um, it is, I have to say, it is about Christianity because obviously I'm a Christian. Um, so at the, you know, for the moment, it's going to be... Um, obviously interdenominational. I don't mind, um, I'm not going to start saying that we can't have, um, well, I wouldn't say we can't have anybody anyway. That was a really silly thing to say. Um, but I am not at all versed in other types of faith. So I think probably it will have to be um, Christian faith-based. Um, yeah. I've said that in a slightly clumsy way, but I do hope you, you get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, it's not meant to be discriminatory in any way, shape or form. It's just um, an area where we can go and share our, our experiences as Christians, as Christian sisters and maybe even brothers um, without being sexist. But um, as far as I know, I don't have any... Um, male followers who are genuinely male followers obviously I get you know lots of those horrible Instagram things where where these chaps or these robots send you things saying hi 
don't know how we got onto that. Anyway, I will be setting up that thread. So again, if it remains empty, so be it, but it will stay there and I will be watching it. I will be adding to it. And if anybody else wishes to chat in there, then um, your, your posts will be respected and listened to. And if people can offer help, then that's the whole idea of it. So that was that. And you've just had a few of Henry's little footsteps in the background. Right, quick chat about my birthday. And then um, we'll probably call it a day, will we, Henry? Because you're wanting some dinner, aren't you? Oh, it's a little waggy tail. There's a little waggy tail. God, it's a big waggy tail, actually. He may well jump at me in a moment because I'm getting nudged and pushed and things. Aren't I? Uh, I should say before my birthday, I was lucky enough to get a little swap package back from Cherie. Now we didn't set out to swap per se, but a little while ago I sent her some bits and bobs and she promised to send me some minis for my scrappy blanket. So she actually sent me um, a parcel with two little packages. One was for my birthday and one was to open there and then. Look, look, there's people watching. There's people watching. Thank you. He's knocked my project bag on the floor. Get out, yes. Scraggy old dog. Yes, scraggy old dog, aren't you? Um, so, and I have posted these on Instagram, but I did want to show you. I've got them on a little dish, and I don't know whether I can hold this there without them all falling off. There you go. Look at those minis. They are perfect. They are so perfect, and they are so pretty. And do you know what? Cherie also sent me a note. She won't mind if I show you this. Look at that. Hand dyed by moi. She dyed them all. So these are all her, all her dyed yarns. They are absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to be putting those into my scrappy blanket diary. I'm going to be cutting little snips off and giving those a page in my stash section. And then I will be working them into, they will go into my striped cupcake, cupcake striped blanket because they're slightly more pastel-y. But they were lovely. And then there were some other bits and bobs as well. She sent some prizes for the, um, the prize drawers as well. But for my birthday, she sent me another little package that was enclosed. I've already said that, haven't I? Um, and the thing I really wanted to show you are these stitch markers that she made. Oh. Oh, yep, Hannah's coming down. I'm going to show you. I hope, I really hope you can see these. How's that? They are so stunningly beautiful. So, again, they are all faith based progress keepers, and I kind of don't want to use them. I just want to keep them there to look at. Can you see them all? I'm trying to match. There's angel wings, there's the fish, tree of life, this little one here. Let's get the little jewel off it. Oh, cracky, can't do it. Says love, faith and hope. It's, you're not going to be able to read that, but they are just gorgeous. And she's made some similar to these as prizes for the giveaways. I absolutely adore those Cherie. She, she also sent me this. I have to show you this. You will have seen this on her podcast as well. It's, I think it's a mouse. Ta -da! It's a pair, oh, it's a pair of scissors. Oh, bit of AMSR there. Hey. That's Hannah coming in. Hang on, just a moment. There. So that was really good fun. Are you taking honey? Yeah. All right, thank you. One down. Come on, get her out of her <laughs> so, yeah, honey's going out for a walk, which is the good news for us, isn't it? There'll be a bit of background noise, so sorry about that. Uh, the other thing she sent me... Um, which I felt I had to show you. Look how 
stunning is that? The colours, yeah, probably is coming up perhaps a little bit light on there. This beautiful crochet flower come mandala come and the inclination I suppose is you could use it as a coaster but I'm actually going to put it on my wall next to my desk so that I can see it. It is just the colours. Oh they're just perfect. Absolutely love it. Oh and a postcard, obviously. I want to make a happy journal and that will go in my happy journal. So that was that. Um, oh, I got a, oh, another gift. I'm not obviously going to show you all my birthday presents because that would be a little bit enough, wouldn't it? Those of you who saw my Instagram know that I got a record player. So I have been prancing around listening to all my old vinyl LPs and it's mostly show, show albums. So oh, I just had so much fun with that. But my lovely friend Anne, who you have heard me talk about before, who is my most knitworthy friend in the whole wide world, because I have knitted gifts for her for many years now, and she absolutely loves them, and it's just so good. Bearing in mind, I have a fairly unknitworthy family, <laughs> apart from Hannah. Um, it's so lovely to be able to make things for Anne. And this year, she came up to see me yesterday on my birthday. We sat outside and had a cup of tea, which was lovely. Haven't seen her for a while because of obviously lockdown. And she made me a present. So I know, I know Chloe watches this. So Chloe, you can tell your mum that I, that's obviously Anne's daughter, Chloe. You can tell her that I'm going to show off her, her gift on the podcast. She made me a bag. Look at that, how beautiful. And if we're coming closer, she has hand stitched and embellished over the flowers of that fabric. And then you've got the, the pond, the park scene there, and then the green. And it's lined in this gorgeous lime green and then the teal of the handles. This is absolutely beautiful. And I said to her, I'm going to use it as one of my quilting bags for, to keep my quilts in. So it's kind of like a project bag. So even though it's, it's a tote, I'm going to use it as a project bag. But look, how special is that? I'm so blessed to have friends like that who make things for me. It's just wonderful. So thank you, Anne, for that. Um, what else? Birthday stuff. Was I going to talk about other birthday stuff? I'm not really sure. I got, um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't really, I'm probably not going to talk about much else, to be honest. The book review is going to be a reverse review because it's going to be about two books that I was actually given for my birthday that I had expressed an interest in. Okay, they were on my Amazon wish list. <laughs> so... <laughs> But I'm going to talk about them in a moment before I've read them. I've read a little bit, but I want to share those with you. Um, and yeah, as I say, I've got some stamping bits. I have also, and I think I shared with you, bought myself a die cutting machine, um, which is a very new thing to me. Uh, but I decided, Hannah and I hit Hobbycraft big time last week. And I saw, I'd been investigating this. And again, Cherie the Great Enabler said to me, oh, the Big Shot is a good one to get. So I went and bought the Big Shot. So look, what I've been creating, Hannah had to have the very first one of these. Look. There. I made her a unicorn. Some of the dies came with the machine, but this one we saw and Hannah said I had to buy it. And so I've made her a unicorn. Um, this isn't hers. I made her one um, in a sort of, I think it was a flowery tea. No, it might have been pink. I'm not sure. Oh, there's a um, And she's now stuck that on the front of her sketchbook that she also bought at Hobbycraft. Um, I'm not going to go into great details on this now. You've already seen the butterflies that I created and the flowers, which I also used. I principally, there you go. 
I, I principally bought it because I wanted to use it to cut hexes and hexy papers um, for the quilting and various other shapes. But obviously I'm going to be able to put it to great use with the, um, with the journaling and things that I'm really into. I will give you a little guided tour of that next week if you would like to see that. I know, um, I think Carol's already asked me if I can show it. Um, we'll look at that next week for sure. Um, I will have more idea of, of some different things that you can do with it then. I know probably lots and lots of people. Is, I never really got into the scrapbooking phase. Um, and I know lots of people do that. And probably these machines are no stranger to you. But as I've said before, this is all new stuff to me. So it's really exciting. Um, so yeah, the die cutting machine. Um, I bought myself last week also some new dress patterns. And I'm hoping to be making a dress this weekend. Uh, not the one that I shared with you a couple of weeks ago because there was, as I said, there was a problem with the sizing of that and I wasn't confident enough to know whether I could actually make it the right size and whether it would suit me. So I have found a pattern that I love. I ordered the fabric. The fabric, as we speak, is in the washing machine being pre-washed. And then I'm really hoping that this weekend, if I can kick Gary off the big dining room table again, I'm gonna cut out the fabric and sew myself the dress. So next week, you never know, I may be wearing a new dress. But don't hold me to that. I've still got the, you know, the stillness shawl to work. <laughs> and I've got the blanket I need to get done as well. So, so that's that really. So I'm going to talk about a couple of books now, but they are um, very um, relevant to creativity and crafting. And again, apologies if you know these books. They are not new, but they are new to me. And the first one is this, The Artist's Way. Oh, there you go. And it's by Julia Cameron. And it's, it's paperback and it's about just under A4 size really. And it is a 12 week long program of exercises and explorations, it says on the back here, to help you loosen up your artistic self. And that review, and there's a very good review on the back by Elizabeth Gilbert, and you'll know that I think Elizabeth Gilbert is fantastic. So um, now, some time ago, possibly before I started the podcast, but only just before, I felt a real lack of creativity, of creative mojo. I really felt like I'd kind of, I just didn't know what direction to go, where I was going why I was doing the things I was doing, why I was doing the knitting projects that I was doing. And I think I did, I did moot this, um, moot this, is that the word? Anyway, I think I talked about this earlier on. And I had found this, this book, The Artist's Way. I, it might've come up as a suggestion actually um, from Amazon. And I thought it was just the thing I needed. Look, I've just tied a little bow there. <laughs> um, I thought it might be just the thing I needed. All the reviews were really good. Now this was published. When was it published? Oh, do, 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 do. I should know this, shouldn't I? This. Oh, 1994. Gosh, so it's been around almost as long as I've been married. But it's basically about talking to you about how you can rediscover your artistic inner self. Now, you know, if you're watching this, let's assume that you're, you've got a fairly decent artistic bent, you're creative. But I think sometimes, well, I'm always all about um, exploring, exploring creativity, exploring possibilities, you know, roads untraveled. And I thought that even though I am fully mojoed up, oh, what a horrible thing to say. I still thought, so for my birthday, Gary and Hannah and Joe bought me this. They also bought me the book that goes with it, which is the Morning Pages Journal. And it's part of the course. So obviously you don't have to do this, but this is actually set out as a 12 week course. And it is from what I read, people do this and they redo it and they redo it. So over the years, you can dip back into it and redo it. And it gives you on a week to week basis, um, activities and little things she do. And she reckons, I mean, it is a commitment because she does say she thinks it's about an hour a day. Um, 
Now, that is obviously quite a commitment and you wouldn't have to spend an hour a day. Nobody's going to sit over you and make sure you do it. But I think the plan is that... Um, 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 you know, it's something you do for your own self, for your value, for value for yourself. So you make it work for you. Um, what I love about it is that she talks, you know, the chapters, let's give you the, what she talks about. And the, the way it's set out, um, they're the basic principles. So if you've ever seen a journaling Bible, the journaling Bible has the words down the middle and then it has a margin for journaling and for notes but what she's done in this is she's got the words down the middle and then you've got quotes about creativity in the side so um, for example there's a Mondrian one here that um, oh, where is it where is it the Mondrian ones and it is again I don't know whether she's a Christian or not. I could look into it. She talks of God. She talks about the creativity being inspired in, a, inspired in us by the all-time creator. But she also goes to great lengths to say that you don't have to look upon it as um, a God-related thing. Now, obviously, I, I do that totally. But she does say that you can use it um, and replace, if you're uncomfortable using the word or the name of God, you can replace it with whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, Mondrian said, the position of the artist is humble. He is essentially a channel, which I really love. We channel creativity. Um, but um, the chapters, you've got recovering a sense of safety. And we're talking about safety in terms of creativity. And I can see why this links in with Elizabeth Gilbert's idea of big magic. Recovering a sense of identity, recovering a sense of power, integrity, possibility, abundance. Um, and it goes all through. I'm going to yawn. Oh, oh excuse me. Um, as you always get that when I talk to him. <laughs> so, and each chapter has tasks you can do. It asks you to write things. It talks about affirmations. Um, but it's about... Um, yeah, um, it's about discovering your inner creativity, really, and finding your way. So it is a really great compliment, a complimentary book to Big Magic that I reviewed several weeks ago. The morning pages then, and Hannah had heard of this, so I don't, I don't know whether people have taken it from Julia Cameron and made it their own, or whether she just used this and made this her own, but it's where each day... Each day you commit to sitting down and writing something or drawing something in the morning pages. And this is how many pages long? Twelve Again, it's 12 weeks. Um, so, and there's little, there's little um, sort of things there to spark off. At the bottom of each page there's a suggestion. So this one is... You are your own promised land, your own new frontier. 77. By tossing out the old and unworkable, we make way for the new and suitable. I like that. And again, these relate, the chapters. So week four is recovering a sense of integrity. And it's about integrity in your crafting. Um, so, um, and your sort of crafting spirit. So it's not um, a religious book. It is a book about creativity so as I say I got the the artist's way there's lots of things by Julia Cameron if you go and have a look on the interweb there's lots of things but the two I got was the artist's way and then the morning pages journal and I'm going to be I think I'm going to commit to doing this I think part of it was in my brain vomit I did put Julia Cameron's um, artist's way but the thing that really I want to share with you um, is that, and I probably can't read this out really because obviously this is part of the book, but she gives 12 basic principles of creativity or for creativity and I love them and I've actually, I'm going to create some sort of journal page on it. Um, 
and I'll read you the first two. There are 10. Did I say 12? There are 10, sorry. The first one, creativity is the natural order of life. Life is energy, pure creative energy. Um, and the third one, when we open ourselves to our creativity, we open ourselves to the creator's creativity within us and our lives. And I don't know, yeah, this, this really, really speaks to me. Her 10 principles about on which she bases this. So I haven't read it. I have read the introduction and the preface. Um, I liked what I read. But I will keep you posted if anybody else, if anybody's done this and, you know, has some comments on it, do let me know what you think. Um, am I going to be completely wasting my time? I don't believe I am because I also believe that these things are very personal. And I also believe that this was, you know, this was brought to my attention at this particular time of my stage of development in myself as a person and as a creative being. Oh, that sounded very arty farty, didn't it? So they were my two books. So that's what I'm going to be looking at this week. Um, oh, so many things, so many things to do. I'm going to sign off now because it's time for a cup of tea. I will be having to feed the dogs as soon as Hannah gets back with honey. Henry is now laying on my foot. So that's him for you. I will wish you all a very happy week ahead. I hope um, you are all able to keep healthy and well and happy. Chin up chicken, as we say, um, which is really not helpful if you're feeling miserable. So, yeah, ignore that. I will also mention that there's a handful of us. Uh, there's a Zoom night run by Angela, who is knitting on the farm over on Instagram. She also has a podcast that many of you will probably know. And she has taken to setting up a little Zoom knit night on a Thursday evening. So that will be this evening, if you are indeed watching this on the day that I'm going to put it up on YouTube. If you're interested in joining, it's very easygoing. It's, it's fun. There's just a small handful of us. I go on there. Um, Cherie sometimes dips in. Gaynor, Tales from Cuckoo Land dips in. There's a few other podcasters who dip in and you are most welcome to come and join us. All you have to do is find Angela on Instagram, drop her a DM and she will give you the password to the chat room that we're in. Uh, the actual meeting details will be posted on her Instagram account, but you need to DM her for the password. Um, and come and join in and chat and knit along. This week is slightly different because there's going to be a quiz. So that's going to be really good fun. It will be a knitty, yarny, fibery related quiz. And the quiz master is actually yours truly. So I'm going to be doing a quiz. So do come and join in that. Check out Angela's Instagram account. And in the meantime, as I said, have a lovely week. Thank you so much for all my birthday wishes. Really appreciated those. I'm going to go and spend a little bit of time on my stillness shawl now while technology does its savvy stuff here. And I shall say, uh, have a great week, be more sheep and make sure you keep cheerful. <laughs>